every minute. minute. To be fair, I remember thoroughly enjoying the CW TV shows a few years back. It's got this mix of extreme campiness and wholesomeness that echoes that of some of the MCU movies, while maintaining that sense of groundedness. The melodrama, though it may lean on it a lot more than most other superhero shows or movies, runs parallel with some of the best aspects of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Remembering how it felt to watch those first two seasons felt surreal because I used to think that was the pinnacle of superhero shows. But I also remember that I was an edgy 16 year old at the time. I wasn't really sure if I remember things correctly and how I actually felt about it. So I rewatched it from season one and I think I've finally figured out what I think about it. The Flash is kind of trash. <laughs> The general consensus seems to be that season 1 and 2 were the best of the series, and it all started to go downhill season 3 and onward. And while I do agree seasons 3, 4, and 5 are worse, rewatching seasons 1 and 2, they weren't really all that great to begin with. Let's start with the most vital parts in running a show. The writing. I don't think every new show or film is required to break new ground in the industry. It doesn't have to reinvent the wheel, it doesn't have to be profound or say something new others haven't done already, cause chances are most of the relevant thought-provoking themes have been done many times already. I do however hold hope that they present these themes in an innovative way so that it feels refreshing and compelling. But sadly The Flash doesn't do this. It's got a cut and paste story arc. Season 1, there's an evil speedster who's secretly an evil member of Team Flash. The episodes in between the beginning and ending shows Barry beating up random C-list villains and tries to show how gradual his speed increase becomes. They're mainly episodic in nature. They serve no narrative purpose to the end goal, the finale. The motivation we're given is that just stop these thugs cause they're bad. Which is alright I guess, for a starter season. In other words, this season, Barry's growth is about him becoming faster. Season 2, there's an evil speedster who's secretly an evil member of Team Flash. The episodes in between the beginning and ending shows him beating up random C-list villains and tries to show how gradual his speed increase becomes. But they serve no narrative purpose to the end goal. Barry runs faster. Season 3, there's an evil speedster who's secretly an evil member of Team Flash. Every episode's filler, but most importantly, Barry gets faster. The fourth season was surprisingly somewhat different in that they didn't have a speedster villain. They didn't have a main guy that ran around super fast like Barry. But this season actually struggles for the opposite reasons the other seasons did. They tried way too hard to be different. Most people seem to agree that this was the worst season. The motivations were at an all-time low, characters got sidelined for characters no one liked, Flash gets dumbed down so other people can look cooler, and the climax was terrible. It's really just a hundred poorly rendered CGI replicas of the main bad guy. <laughs> Season 5 tries to bring it back to its roots, in that each episode is nearly told through the eyes of a new speedster, seeing their trials and tribulations as they're getting used to their powers. But the thing is though, it's already been done before, so it comes off tired and uninspired rather than new. This show reuses the same character arc, the same actions, the same consequences, the same conflicts, the same resolution, and the same execution. It's basically self-plagiarism. They reskin and repackage the same emotions and motives. They try to mask the lazy writing by throwing in more comic book references. No one minds a few nods here and there. I don't mind it. Oh hey look, that's Batman, or hey look, that's Superman. What I can't wrap my head around is how the writers actively chose to sacrifice dialogue and dynamic between the characters for more references. I did like the first season quite a bit years ago. There was some really good chemistry between the cast members and the things they said, though covered in cheese, was kind of heartwarming. But now looking back at it and how they reuse that same formula for the newer episodes, yeah, that was all lies. The people on this show don't talk like real people. They don't feel like characters anymore, and I'm not sure if they ever did. They're caricatures. Walking, talking cartoons made to spit out random science jargon, allusions to other characters, references to cringy different aliases. Think you can keep up, Girl of Steel? Oh, just you watch Scarlet Speedster. They'll do this thing where they won't refer to the Flash as Flash, but Scarlet Speedster, and it just sounds so icky as the actors try to make it sound cool. It doesn't. 
You ever wonder why the phrase Amazonian princess is never said in Wonder Woman? It sounds really nasty! You ever wonder why they rarely ever call Captain America the Star Spangled Man? Because it sounds gross! I think it's only said once, but it takes place during his shoot of a cheeky, lame Captain America ad. It's meant to be lame, so it tonally fits. There are some exceptions to this rule. Dark Knight sounds pretty cool, Webhead can be used as an insult, but it doesn't work for everyone. Some names are just better than others. To play something like Scarlet Speedster or Girl of Steel in supposedly awe-inspiring moments completely takes you out of the show. The actors are trying, you can see it, they're trying really hard, but it does not work. Speaking of which, the acting. This goes beyond that of just the DCCW shows. The CW in general does this really weird thing where they prioritize physical appearances over acting and direction. And it's not like they're bad actors. They've got their solid moments scattered here and there. It's as if the actors were told to be more breathy and stoic because they think that's what makes a good villain. But it really isn't. I'm sick of working day after day, night after night, only to have my work benefit your mother. With the information I can get from you, I can finally get out of this place. So you're gonna stay here until I get everything that I need. You are not going to test me. Yes, I am. No, Nigel. You are not going to test me. Now or ever. Wait, let go, let go. Caitlin, don't do this. This isn't you. You don't know anything about me, mother. They're trying to make the actors look as pretty as possible for the camera. And of course, a lot of the time, emoting or acting won't agree with that idea. So you get these strange scenes where the acting is pretty fine, and then it jarringly switches over to being cartoonishly wooden. This was the scene Tuesday night as once again the Flash saved Central City from certain destruction. After a worldwide power outage blanketed every country in darkness, a bizarre purple energy surprise. The destructive phenomenon emanated from a satellite. <laughs> was reported that he escaped Flash's grasp after hijacking an armored vehicle. Every matter will die. You've probably heard me say the word cartoon a lot, because honestly, that's what the show feels like. It is a cartoon. Most of the episodes are so stretched out, inflated with unfunny jokes that it almost becomes a parody of itself when it takes itself too seriously, which is quite often. The biggest sin in this little formula of theirs is that all of their episodes are almost an hour long each. But most of the stuff that happens in them are so inconsequential to the bigger narrative they built up from the beginning of each season. It's padding. A lot of the mid-season episodes are barely held together by a single thread due to a season which could be better told in 12 or 13 episodes being stretched to 23. Having shorter episodes would basically cure the pacing problem that plagues this franchise, and it would even allow the studio to focus their budget on cleaning up the visual effects on fewer scenes. Because the CGI in the show is awful. The final nail in the coffin that made me quit watching it a while ago is something a lot of things suffer from when they've gone on for too long and flat out ran out of ideas. Inconsistency One episode you'll see the Flash react and run so fast that time is essentially frozen. And then two episodes later, he'll just stand there and wait to get taken out by the bad guy. How do you take down someone who's faster than light? How do you make someone who sees things happen before anyone else can vulnerable? You act like it never happened. They actively regress Barry's growth and development backwards to try to add this sense of false tension. But it's so apparent that it's fabricated. They're trying to make Barry physically vulnerable, but it doesn't work with what's shown in the past few episodes. I kid you not, there is an entire episode specifically dedicated to show off how fast the Flash is. In the episode titled Flash Time, Barry has to come up with a solution to stop a nuke from going off while it's already going off. Presumably that's under, what, three seconds? It's just 40 minutes of him freaking out not knowing what to do, and then he solves it by just remembering some random plot device. It's implied that the Flash can't go this fast for too long because it drains him, which is great for world building, but terrible for raising stakes. They never explain why he doesn't just do that in short 10 second intervals. If you get drained for doing it for almost an hour, but it was efficient at saving people, why on earth would you just get rid of the concept entirely? 
You're running super fast while time is already frozen. 10 seconds is all you need. Whenever actual danger comes up, it just makes it feel like Barry's stupid. He has the opportunity to save people and succeed, but he just chooses not to. I know this might be coming off as way too mean, because everything superheroes has plot holes, but I wouldn't be so hard on it if the plot holes didn't bleed through to how it constantly regresses their character growth. Barry feels terrible about what happened to his parents in season 1. His dad's in jail and his mom was murdered. He goes back in time to try and save his mom, but then chooses not to. He realizes he'd be changing the entire course of his life. But then season 2 takes a piss all over season 1, and Barry goes back in time to actually save his mom, having not learned a single thing thing. I think regressive character arcs can actually be pretty powerful if done properly, especially through themes of desperation, self-destruction, and loneliness. The Flash Season 2 just kind of throws in desperation at the very last minute, so when he does regress backwards, you don't really feel that weight or impact of the situation as much as you should. Barry in Season 3 tries to fix what he already learned was wrong back in Season 1. Seasons 4 and 5 his character just stays static as everyone else around just throws one-liners. Time to get cold blooded. Yeah, that's What are you, Des? Good and talk. Yeah. I don't see no dust. Peekaboo. She meant the other duck. Yeah, I cannot believe you actually thought she meant a duck duck. Excelsior. Bread. Cool party. I think at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how it shared similarities to the campiness of some of the MCU films. But the thing that made films like Guardians of the Galaxy work with humor was because Guardians uses humor and exaggerated irony to add a sense of flavor and style to the film. It's used to flesh out the dynamics between Rocket and Peter, Peter and Gamora, Drax and Mantis. It gives us a look at the back and forth between the characters and their clashes in ideology. In short, Guardians uses comedy as a door to explore new innovative ways of storytelling. The Flash uses humor and exaggerated irony as a crutch. It uses it to stretch 20 or 30 minutes of actual relevant content to 45 minute long episodes. Whoa! <laughs> no! Huh? It's used to create tonal imbalances, plot inconsistencies, and character contradictions. Episodes and seasons usually end on cliffhangers, trying to entice the viewers to come back and watch the next episode. And in a way, I can see why other people would like this type of story structure. There's a bunch of narrative threads that are being told at the same time, and when one of those storylines end, other storylines then take the forefront. None of them really get a satisfying conclusion. And that's just how the CW works. You look at shows like Arrow and Riverdale, and they run the exact same way. These shows bank on the idea of never-ending buildup, a continuous feel of rising action, cliffhanger after cliffhanger, only for you to feel the bad taste of a terrible resolution because they don't know how to write closures. The thing is, endings are most of the time the best parts of not just TV shows, but books, games, songs, movies. Oftentimes, it can make or break a franchise. And that's why this is a really, really bad TV show. The Flash is a textbook definition of a franchise overstaying their welcome. These characters seemingly live in this sort of odd limbo where they're developed one episode and then they're completely reset the very next episode. There is no beginning for them. There is no middle. There is no end. They're just... there. With the release of DC streaming service shows like Doom Patrol, and how pretty great the first few episodes are, it just goes to show how outdated things like The Flash or Arrow are. To me, this is the type of series that ages horrendously. If you loved it back then just because The Flash was adapted on screen, then you might still like it right now. But if you only kinda enjoyed it and was interested in seeing the interaction between the characters, then you probably wouldn't rewatch a single episode. Apparently the CW just announced that Arrow's finally ending, and I commend them for that. I'm not glad that it's ending. I'm glad that they can finally work on giving the show a definitive payoff, a satisfying conclusion to what's been many seasons of the bland CW formula. I don't know if Flash is heading in the same direction, but I think they should at least, at least, consider it. Or maybe just do 10 more seasons, quantity over quality. No!